There were few players held in such high esteem at Newcastle as Jackie Milburn. The striker has a stand named after him at St James's Park, in recognition of the 14 years of service and three FA Cups he gave to the Magpies. This is a story of Jackie Milburn, a Newcastle legend. Jackie Milburn was born in Ashington, Northumberland, on the 11th of May, 1924. Many members of his family would also go on to be footballers, with four of his cousins playing professionally, and his other cousin Elizabeth would go on to give birth to both Bobby and Jackie Charlton. His father Alec worked as a coal cutter at a nearby colliery, with Jackie later admitting that he was terrified every time he saw his father go into the pits. He was given a pair of football boots as a Christmas present when he was eight, and it is said that football dominated his life from this point onwards. Jackie's father was a key part of his development as a player, but Alex's strictness often got the better of Jackie. During a sports day event as a child, Jackie won a race and collapsed at the end from exhaustion. Alec, who had arrived just in time for the end of the race, mistook the collapse as showboating and gave his son a stern talking to. Jackie said that his strict upbringing, whilst having the best intentions, led to him feeling an inferiority complex throughout his life. However, his father would also give his son due credit. Alec promised his son a penny for every goal Jackie scored for the school team, and as a result, Jackie scored twice on his debut. Leaving school at 14, Jackie spent time going through various jobs, such as a pantry boy and stacking shelves, before operating machinery at a local colliery. He would often play football with his colleagues at the air training corps, and was invited along with many others to a trial with Newcastle United. He attended a Newcastle game with his friend, and uttered to him, we could play better than this, surely. He impressed during a series of trials, and was offered a contract after scoring six goals for a trialist side, as they defeated a Newcastle XI in a friendly by nine goals to three. Newcastle manager Stan Seymour was so impressed that he decided to sign Milburn there and then. Seymour went to the Milburn household in person to discuss the deal, eventually persuading Alec Milburn, before inviting the family out for a celebratory drink. Seymour later remarked that he had secured his finest ever signing for 10 quid and a couple of rounds of Newcastle Brown. Jackie Milburn played his first match for Newcastle in 1943, in the wartime league against Bradford City. Newcastle lost, but Seymour comforted Milburn, assuring him that he would be in the squad next week, and the decision was proven to be the right one. Milburn scored with his first touch of the game, as Newcastle won 3-2. After the end of the war, Milburn made his official competitive debut for the Magpies in the FA Cup. In front of 60,000 spectators at St James's Park, Milburn scored twice in a 4-2 win. His pace astonished spectators, and it was the start of something special. Milburn kept his place in the side, but the club couldn't find their way out of the second tier and Stan Seymour stepped down as manager in 1947, being replaced by George Martin. Following the sale of centre-forward Charlie Wayman to Southampton, Milburn was moved from right wing to the centre to replace him. Martin faced criticism from some of his staff for the decision, but he was quickly proven right. In his first game at centre-forward, Jackie Milburn netted a hat-trick in a 5-3 win over Berry. Milburn continued to net goals for the rest of the season, and it was enough to send Newcastle up. The Magpies finished third in the league to seal promotion, with Jackie Milburn scoring 20 goals in 40 games. Milburn continued his fine form in the top flight, and also received his first England call-up. In 1949, Newcastle toured the United States, and Milburn continued to dazzle, scoring 31 times in 10 games across the tour. He was netting goals, but was desperate to have some silverware to show for it. George Martin left the manager during the 50-51 season, and was replaced by the returning Stan Seymour. Newcastle were on for a league and cup double, but towards the end of the campaign, their league form slumped, and the title ended up eluding them. However, Milburn scored in each round, to see Newcastle head to Wembley for the FA Cup final, where they faced Stanley Matthews Blackpool. Due to their poor league form, Newcastle had been replaced as favourites by the Tangerines, 
with many neutrals cheering on Blackpool as they wanted to see Matthews win the FA Cup. This frustrated Milburn, and he said he was keen to spoil the party. Milburn thought he had given Newcastle the lead in the first half, but his goal was incorrectly ruled out for handball. But only five minutes into the second half, George Robledo played a ball through for Milburn, who tucked it in to give Newcastle the lead. And only a few minutes later, Milburn blasted in a shot from 25 yards to double Newcastle's advantage. Newcastle kept their lead and would win the FA Cup. All of Milburn's goal-scoring exploits now had their due reward. Newcastle were again hopeful of a League and Cup double the next campaign, but a late collapse in the league saw these hopes once again fade away. Milburn was linked of a move to Tottenham Hotspur that January, but pledged his allegiance to Newcastle, saying that if he left the Magpies, it would have to have been because he was forced out. Despite the league collapse, they still had a strong chance to retain the FA Cup. Milburn scored a hat-trick in a quarter-final win over Portsmouth. Newcastle defeated Blackburn in the semi-finals to seal a place at Wembley once again. A late goal from George Robledo saw Newcastle defeat Arsenal 1-0 as they became the first team in the 20th century to retain the FA Cup. Milburn ended the season with 25 goals. Milburn struggled with injuries over the next few years, but was at Wembley once again in 1955, as Newcastle faced Manchester City in the FA Cup final. Milburn did not mess about, scoring the opening goal after 45 seconds, a record that lasted for over 40 years, as Newcastle stormed a 3-1 win to claim their third FA Cup that decade. Milburn, a man with so many hat-tricks, now had a hat-trick of FA Cups. Milburn's time at Newcastle would come to an end in 1957. He left the club with a grand total of 201 goals in 399 appearances, with his goal-scoring record standing for almost 50 years until it was broken by Alan Shearer. Despite his goal-scoring prowess, he only played 13 times for England, netting 10 goals. He would join Belfast-based club Linfield afterwards as a player-manager winning a plethora of trophies and finishing as top scorer in both his seasons there. He would finish his playing career with English non-league side Usley. He had a brief spell as manager of Ipswich Town before going into a career in journalism, and also briefly served as an advisor to Newcastle manager and former teammate Joe Harvey. In 1967, ten years after leaving Newcastle, Milburn was given a belated testimonial. Milburn was worried that Newcastle fans were forgotten about him, but he was proven wrong, as around 50,000 turned up at St James's Park to see the match, which included Milburn, the Charlton brothers, and Ferenc Puskas. The ever-modest Milburn had been shown that he would remain in the hearts of Geordies forever. Jackie Milburn died on the 9th of October 1988, at the age of 64, following a battle with lung cancer. His funeral saw thousands of mourners line the streets of Newcastle to pay their respects. The year before his death, a new stand at St James's Park was named a Jackie Milburn stand, and a statue of him stands just outside Newcastle Stadium. The name of Jackie Milburn lives on in eternity in the hearts of Newcastle fans. He is a symbol of the working class football dream, having come from a family who worked in the mines to achieve glory. Despite his inferiority complex, it is clear that Milburn was and is still loved by so many, and his name will forever be one spoken of with adoration by those at St James's Park. <laughs>